Howdy folks, welcome back. I picked up this Amco brake lathe from a shop that had been closed down for several years. I actually went there to purchase a tire balancing machine and I spotted this little guy sitting in the corner and it came home with me. It's kind of in sad shape. The adapters and stuff there are just tossed in the chip pan. They're all rusty. I think it's been sitting for quite some time and it must have sat by a window or in front of a door or something all the paint and especially the labels are all faded you can't really read them i believe this is a model 4000 it does run and it does work but it needs a little bit of love so this model will do both rotors and drums and it has the twin cutting attachment here on the front for the rotors and then you can see back there is the long boring bar for doing the drums I don't know how old this is. It does have a serial number on it. 39124A. Uh, I guess I could call Amco and see if they can put a date on it for me. So everything works as far as I know. The spindle runs and the power feed works in both directions. It's just a little bit sad looking. This is a 110 volt machine. And then here are all of the adapters. So. So this thing here is a chip pan, they just tossed all the adapters into it. And they're all pretty rusty. So probably the first thing we need to do is clean those up. And uh, yeah, we'll figure out what we've got going on here. Now for whatever reason, the lathe did not come with a bench. I don't know if it was ordered that way originally or if they, they repurposed the bench or scrapped it or what happened. Anyway, I found this old steel workbench, actually belonged to my grandpa. It was sitting upside down under a cottonwood tree. Must have been sitting there for a long time. And it was actually so rusty between the metal top and the steel frame that the whole top was bowed up about three quarters of an inch. So I actually had to cut the whole metal top off, use my needle scaler to rattle all the rust off, and then weld the top back on, and then I gave it a paint job. And I put some wood panels on the bottom to make a little bit of a shelf. So sorry I didn't film that. I didn't even think about this being something to put on the YouTube channel. Anyway, this is gonna be the bench for our brake lathe. I also bought new way covers. So there's two of these bellows style and then two of these, I don't know what they are, canvas wrapped around a big spring. We're gonna replace those. They're all in pretty sad shape. And then I bought some new little, and I bought some of these little wing nut bolt things. At least one of them's missing out of that twin cutting head and I think one of them might be broken. And I bought some new carbide cutting inserts. Yeah, she's pretty scuzzy. Hold on, folks. There we go. Yeah. Hey, 
yeah, I don't know, it's not ideal. And there's definitely some, some pitting in the spindle. It's just from sitting, I think, more than anything else. But, yeah, the only way to really fix that would be to send it out, have the outside diameter ground, have it chrome plated, and then have it ground again. And, you know, that would exceed the cost of just buying another brake lathe. So, probably not going to do that. Yeah, it's quite a bit better down here. That's a lovely sound. Yeah, she's been a little wet, I think. I bet it sat by a garage door, got rained on or something like that. So I measured the spindle with a micrometer and there is some wear. So out here where the, the spindle's never been used, it's right around 2.875, so at 2 and 7 eighths. And it goes down all the way to 0.8743 down here where it's the most worn. So we got, I don't know, 7 or 8 tenths of an inch of wear. So that's 0 0.0008, which is significant. That's about twice what it should be. So it does have some wear. Well, I must be doing a good job cleaning because I made a giant mess. Got the machine pretty well stripped down. It's probably about as far as we're going to go with it. And then I cleaned up all of the adapters. So hit these with the wire wheel. Ran these through the sandblast cabinet. And I got all the rust and porch paint knocked off the chip pan. So that's more or less ready to be painted. I'm not sure I'm going to paint the adapters. I guess we'll have to see how that goes. But yeah, just got to scrub the machine down and we're ready to start taping it off. Hey guys, welcome back. Working on a 1995 Ford F-250 with a Power Stroke diesel engine. And this is not my truck, it's actually my dad's truck. So his complaint is that it has an extended crank time, and especially when it's warm. So, we're going to see what we can figure out here, we got IPR percentage, ICP pressure, and engine RPM. So let's see what it does. <coughs> Looks normal. Try it again. Well, sorry guys, I didn't get to film fixing that F-250. My dad was here helping me and he was on kind of a time crunch, so we didn't have a chance to record it. 
here's what we found. I pulled the IPR valve out. I thought maybe the IPR valve would be sticking or, or something was going on there. And instead we found that the O-ring and the backup ring that go right here on the IPR valve were both torn. And I think they've been torn for quite some time. So that basically causes a high pressure oil leak. And that's the problem. It wasn't building the high pressure oil pressure fast enough so that your ICP pressure would, would come up, but it wasn't coming up quickly enough to, to start the catch. Well, I found a problem in the drive mechanism. So it's got this big pulley that fits on here, like so. That was a bear to get off. And it's a little bit broken, but I don't think that'll hurt too much. The big problem is this shaft. You see how much play it has, axial play? So it should have a tapered roller bearing on either end according to the parts breakdown. So I think something's, something's wrong there. So I went ahead and drained the oil out of the gearbox. I'm going to pull this plate off. We're going to see what we find. There should be shims underneath of that plate. So I want to replace that seal. I think it's been leaking. Okay, well that one looks pretty good. And that one looks pretty good. I wonder if it's just not shimmed right. I don't know. We got a little bit of wear. Something's going on. So there's a expansion plug over here you have to knock out in order to access the race on the opposite side. And then there's a spiral lock ring in here. Well, I went ahead and cleaned the bearings up. They really look pretty good. I mean, I don't see any problems with them. I checked the inner race and the outer race, but something's going on. I mean, that shaft probably had 30 thousandths of end play and we can't shim that out. There's only like seven thousandths worth of shims in the end of that bearing plate, so. Anyway, I'm going to order some new ones. We're going to go ahead and replace them, and then we'll deal with that end play issue. Okay, shop looks like a Bangladesh chip breaking yard, so we must be doing something, right? I think it's stripped down and cleaned up as well as it's going to be. Got both gear boxes off, the power feed boxes off, and cleaned, belt guard. The adapters that I'm going to paint, the cross feed, the twin turning attachment, and the actual machine itself. Now there was a sticker here at one time, probably some kind of a warning label or something, I don't know. Can't read it anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and strip that off. We're gonna leave the tags, even though, you know, they're basically illegible, but I don't know if I have it, have it in me to restore the tags. Plus, I don't even know what this one's supposed to say. So we'll tape those off and we'll paint around them. Well, I think the prep work is finally done. So I picked us up a few of these aerosol rebuild kits. I'm going to get to it. Well, I think that's all it's getting from me. Three cans of spray paint. Looks okay, I guess. I'm a terrible Terrible painter. Just, I hate doing it. Never get good results. Always have runs or you know dull spots, but whatever. It's a brake lathe, it doesn't matter. hot again today and my shop mates have stolen the fan okay we got some new parts so I got a new shaft seal that would be that guy right there and two new cups and cones so these are national brand tapered roller bearings made in Spain oddly enough never know what you're gonna get with with bearings 
but yeah, that'll work. Seal made in Mexico. And then this is a seal for the spindle. They only had one in stock. I had to order the other one, so it'll be here in a few days. Made in USA. Scratch the paint, fella. Oh, come on. Oh, hey, everybody. No one can see your new dress? Because of the expo? Because of the sun. There we go. Very nice. Don't worry, the dog followed me, too. Up, up. Hope everyone is staying cool and safe from the hurricanes. Wish we had a hurricane here. We did. It was called a derecho. Yeah, that was pretty rough. Don't worry, we'll get the after effects of we'll get some rain. It's coming. Straight up the Mississippi. Okay guys, I put the cap on and just initial setup looks pretty good. Got about one thousandth of backlash. So I did not install any shims. These are the shims that were in it before. So I think we're going to put a little bit of Permatex on that thing and put it together. Urgh. I like this stuff because it's, it's super thin and it doesn't affect the preload of the bearings. It does make a mess. Cool. That's a major improvement. I, I think we probably had at least 30 thousandths of end play in that shaft before. So, yeah, I'm happy with it. So the bearing bore over here is just sealed up with one of these expansion plugs and I'm sure you're not supposed to reuse these but this one's in good shape so I think we're gonna try it We'll have to touch the paint up a little bit, but that'll work. All right, we need to do some work on this pulley. The bore is worn, and uh, yeah, I think it's about six thousandths oversize, something like that. Yeah, it's showing four there, but I think it's a little bit more than that. Anyway, what we're gonna do, I just picked up a bronze bushing, you know, an oil light bushing. So normally these are sized already for a press fit. So this is a 7 8 outside diameter, 3 quarter inside diameter. So all we got to do is just bore this out to 7 8 nominal and then this bushing will press in. 
So we'll probably bore it out just to true it up. And then I actually have a 7 8 reamer here. insurance on here. Loctite. Yeah. Usually these brass bushings are sized so you can go right on size and is it a new bushing? Yeah. yeah it'll, it'll work. It'll be right. You should have a one and a half or two thousandths on that when you get done and the bore should be it's a, what kind of is it a oil light? Yeah. Yeah it'll be right. You never have to resize it. That'll work. And then when you get done, the bushing has to be sized on the ID. So it's actually going to collapse a little bit. And so I just ran this three quarter inch reamer through it. Now we're perfect on our inside diameter. I also cross drilled the bushing and just tapped those threads the rest of the way through so we can use the same grub screws that it had originally. All right, so on this shaft, there is no keyway. The only thing that holds the pulley on is the set screws that go into these little divots. And they, they both provide the rotational you know, resistance and they keep the thing from coming off. It's actually a, a pretty decent system. So what we're going to do is put a little bit of blue Loctite on these set screws. Because I think what happened before is that the, the set screws just vibrated loose and then the pulley spun on the shaft and you know that spinning was what caused the the bore to get damaged. So usually the worst ones are just like this small pulley here where they just have a single set screw that pushes on top of a flat key. Those uh, have a real bad tendency to, to wear out the bore and then also for the pulley to walk off the shaft. So usually what happens when I, when I encounter a pulley like this that has just a single set screw on top of the keyway, what I'll do is just drill and tap another one from the side and then I'll dimple the shaft so that the, you know, the pulley has a chance of staying on. This one seems to be in pretty good shape, so I don't think we're going to worry too much about it right now. But if it becomes an issue later, that's how we'll take care of it. All right, that's pretty good. It's got a little bit of run out in it. I did the best I could to center it up on the lathe, but I didn't get it perfect. And then this pulley down here for the motor actually has quite a bit of wear. So I don't know. I think ideally it'd be best to have a new pulley set, but from looking at the catalog, it doesn't, the parts catalog, it doesn't seem like this style of pulley is even available anymore. They've gone to a, a two sheave design with a, a multi rib belt, like a serpentine style belt. So I don't know if that's a retrofit that you can do for these older machines or, yeah, I don't, I don't know how much about it, but we'll see how it does for now. If it becomes an issue in the future, we'll just go ahead and replace those pulleys. I think it'll be okay. Change of plans.
Well, it's just a little bit too thick for this rotary cutter, but it's definitely the way to go. These are 9 16 diameter holes. We'd be here till Christmas drilling those out with a regular drill bit. I think it looks pretty good up there. Probably should have done that to start with instead of working on the floor. I installed this cross speed screw. There's a thrust bearing up here. Went ahead and greased that. Well, the service manual kind of says not to take these feed gearboxes apart, that they're, I don't know, permanently lubricated or whatever. So, yeah, we're not going to take them apart. I am missing this cover right here for this drive shaft for the cross feed screw. Seems to be a common problem with these. Amco lathes. I've looked at a few of them that are missing that. And this one's actually broken out on the casting here, so not sure what we're going to do with that yet. Well, I've got the wiring done. I crimped on all new ring terminals, but I was able to reuse most of the wire. So this is a double pull circuit breaker here, and then this is the toggle switch. So I replaced the switch. They had this double throw switch installed. I don't know why, so I just replaced it with the Heavy, du heavy duty single throw switch and then I replaced the cord and installed a new cord grip and check out this circuit breaker so the way the circuit breaker works it has this button on top that resets it but you had to pull out this crazy knob with a, a taper machine on the end of it and then you push that back in to reset it and I can't do it with one hand there we go it's kind of a crazy way to do that but it works. Anyway, the lamp is all wired in too, so all I've got to do is slip this thing on the back of the machine and then this little, I don't know what you want to call it, bar here hooks over these two ears in the casting. Well, I haven't gotten the second seal yet, but I think we can go ahead and install the first one on the back side here. Then we can install the long feed and kind of keep moving. There we go. This has kind of become my default oil seal install procedure. Use a little bit of this Loctite 515 flange sealant on the outside and then pack the inside with Silglide so that the spring doesn't pop off. Or hopefully the spring doesn't pop off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's not very much fun. Every Amco brake lathe I've ever seen has some kind of a pegboard to hold all of the adapters. And I don't want mine to feel left out, so I picked up this metal pegboard from McMaster Car. Manufacturer is actually called Diamond Life. I think it's 
22 tall by 44 wide. Kind of pricey, about 75 bucks for this thing. But it's, you know, some kind of a thick gauge steel and then the edges are rolled over. So it's about two inches too wide for what we want to do. So I'm just going to cut along these lines here. And then we're going to notch out here for the braces in the table. And then we'll go ahead and attach it probably with some self-tapping screws. That should be the last of the painting, which is just fine with me. I hate painting. I finally got the other seal and I got that installed. So now we can install this front telescoping cover. And it goes like this. Anyway, there's a few designs on this Amco lathe that kind of make you scratch your head, but this is probably the biggest one. The way this way cover works, this thing is stationary and the spindle rotates. So it clamps around the, the body here, no problem. But on the out end, it clamps around this ring. And then this ring is held on with a, a snap ring. So the spindle is supposed to rotate inside of this ring, but there's not really any provision for lubrication. And then you can see where the snap ring has just worn, worn this right through. So I don't really like that, but I guess I don't have a better idea. Probably what I'm gonna do, I'll put this back on and we'll run it for a while. If we have problems with it at some point, what I'll do is just take this ring and I'll machine it down to a flat washer. And then we'll make a new ring out of plastic, probably Delrin. And then, you know, we'll have the ring, then the snap ring, then the Delrin. And that'll be a better, a better slipping material than this cast iron. It's kind of weird, it has a woodruff key and a flat for the set screw. The little knob here pulled out of the hand wheel. See, it was just knurled. Come on, knurled originally. So I just dimpled it a little bit with the automatic center punch. We're gonna put a little bit of red Loctite on it. See what happens. So if this doesn't work, then what I'll do is just drill and tap from the side and we'll put a set screw in to hold it. I think that'll work. That's an interesting way to do it. There's no shoulder. They just use that lock nut to set the... Yeah, I guess it works. Cool, and then I re-scratched my reference mark here so I can actually see it. Looks good. Now these arbors are actually matched to the spindle. So it's got a little mark right here. There's a little mark on the spindle. And when we install it, we're supposed to line those up. I assembled this twin rotor cutting head off camera, but it's all freed up. The springs are now working to pull the little cutter bits back in. So there's little springs down here on the bottom that are supposed to pull these inserts back in. Those weren't working before, it was so jammed up with crap. Yeah, a couple new knobs. I think it's good. There's supposed to be a plug here that keeps all the junk out of the inside of this bore. I've got to come up with something for that. Maybe a, a cork or something.
Well, I'm running out of pieces. Maybe we ought to see if it'll run. Well, we've got no cross speed, so we better figure that out. I want to point out that there's a nice, soft, comfortable dog bed right there, but Max has chosen to lay in the pile of dirty oil dry. Well, Max is in puppy timeout. He's stuck in the shop with me for another week and a half. He dislocated his hip about four days ago, and we had it reset, but he's not supposed to run or jump or go up and down stairs or do anything you know really active which is a pretty tall order for a German short hair pointer these are the most high energy active dogs I've ever seen in my life well I see the problem there's a gear right here that's supposed to slip over that shaft that comes out the end of the lead screw and it fell down it's just bouncing around inside this gearbox so what we're gonna have to do is put the first part of the gearbox back on then we'll slip the gear over that shaft then we'll put the second part of the gearbox on alright take two Got the gear in there with both dowel pins and I put this bolt through from the bottom side to hold the gear or the clutch back here. Whatever you want to call it, the dog plate. There's got to be a better way. Let's try that again. I moved the speed selector shaft to the opposite side of this gearbox. See what happens here. Well, I recited a few secret incantations and the gearbox slid right together. Let's see if it works. Success! Well, before we go any crazier as far as assembly goes, I kind of want to know if it's going to work. So let's uh, let's try it. The worst that can happen.
got about the weight. Oh, it sounds like it's starting to chatter. Pretty darn good. Sounded like chatter, but it doesn't feel like chatter. Didn't quite clean up, which is amazing. But uh, we need to break this down. I, th I think the arbor might be bent. Find out here. This is left hand thread, by the way. Nah, it's not bent. It's just an optical illusion. I don't know. That's not too bad. Considering I really haven't used it before. Don't know the ins and outs of it. I was taking about eight thousandths on a side. And you see it didn't quite clean up there, but... Yeah, that's a, an acceptable surface finish in my opinion. Probably need to rough it up a little bit just so it doesn't... Yeah. I mean, these rotors are pretty, pretty crusty, so it's probably amazing we were able to do that well. I'm setting up to attach the chip pan to the front of this bench. I can't drill all the way through and put a, a bolt all the way through because the, the brace, you know, the bottom frame of the, the top of the table. So we're going to drill and tap these for 5 16 18. That'll work just fine. I think it's 3 16 wall tubing, so that should be plenty strong enough. Well, not being able to run and jump is Basically a prison sentence for a German short hair pointer. Yeah. We're not very happy about it, are we, Max? <laughs> One more week, pup. Alright guys, we're almost there. I went ahead and installed the peg board, put the pegs on, and hung the adapters. Pretty happy with that. And I installed the grease fitting. It originally had some lettering on this little plaque. I don't know what it said. The book says to grease it once a month, so I'm guessing it said roughly the same thing. But there's one part that's missing. Down here on this little support arm for the cross speed, there's supposed to be a, a little brass plug with a spring. And I guess that keeps this thing from rocking when the screw is not tight. So I just cut a piece off of a little brass rod 
we're going to try to stick that in there with a spring. I may have to cut the spring down. It may be too long, but we'll see what happens. Well, once again, we've got the Bangladesh shipbreaking yard impression going on here in the shop. So let me clean up a little bit and we'll do a recap on this lathe. It is quite a mess in here. Right, pup? At least you're using the dog bed. All right, folks, there you go. Restoring an Amco Model 4000 brake lathe. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. It looks nice, and more importantly, it works. Now, I'll probably get a lot of comments about how brake lathes are obsolete and how I'm polishing the brass on the Titanic, but I have a need for a brake lathe with some frequency, and I've always turned brake rotors and drums on an engine lathe, which can be done, but it's, it's kind of tedious. The real beauty of an actual brake lathe is in the work holding. All of these little arbors really make the process go quickly, plus the twin cutting tool here for the rotors. Now my local auto parts store does have a brake lathe. It's an Amco just like this, and they will machine rotors and drums for you. It doesn't even cost that much. The problem is getting them to do it in a reasonable amount of time. If they're busy at all, you could wait several days up to a week, and that's pretty inconvenient. So it's gonna be nice having my own machine to do the oddball stuff that I need to do from time to time. Now, did we have to restore it and make it all pretty to get that done? No, but it's kind of fun and you know, it gives us a little bit of satisfaction and pride of ownership, so yeah. So thanks guys for watching. I don't know how long this video is gonna be, hopefully not too long. I just, I didn't wanna drag it out into multiple parts. I'd rather just get it all done in one video. And you know, I've had a lot of comments about the lack of machine tool content on the channel. Well, this is as close as we're gonna get for now. So, thanks for watching, see you next time.